NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has hardly opened its eyes, and the universe is new. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWS, has once again pushed the frontiers of cosmic exploration. In a recent and astonishing development, the telescope has observed a phenomenon that appears to challenge the long-established Eddington limit, a theoretical boundary defining the maximum luminosity a star or any luminous object can achieve before radiation pressure counteracts gravitational force. This event, incredibly, occurred in direct connection with one of the most distant and ancient galaxies ever discovered, GN Z11. As if confirming its role as a cosmic time machine, JWS not only zoomed in with unprecedented clarity on this primordial galaxy, but also recorded a burst of luminosity that defies what physicists and astronomers have long held as a limit insurmountable by nature itself. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. GNZ11, located over 13.4 billion light years away in the constellation Ursa Major, has been a subject of fascination since its initial detection. It exists so far back in time that light from it began its journey to Earth a mere 400 million years after the Big Bang. Until now, much of what was known about GNZ11 came from limited spectral data and redshift estimations from Hubble and ground-based telescopes. JWS has now peeled back that veil with its near-infrared camera NIRCAM and mid-infrared instrument Miri, giving scientists their clearest view yet of this embryonic cosmic structure. But beyond the clear imaging, it was the burst, a flare of energy that exceeded the Eddington luminosity threshold that sent ripples through the astrophysics community. The Eddington limit represents a balance point, the amount of outward radiation pressure a body like a star can emit before it can no longer hold itself together under the force of gravity. Exceeding this limit, in theory, should mean that the object starts shedding mass or dispersing its material, essentially blowing itself apart. Yet JWST observed something more complex and baffling. GNZ-11 showed signs of an energy outburst surpassing the Eddington limit without the expected structural disintegration. This suggests that the dynamics at play in the early universe might not adhere strictly to models based on modern astrophysical observations. It introduces the possibility that the first galaxies operated under different physical rules or conditions, or at the very least under extreme environmental pressures and feedback mechanisms that we are only beginning to comprehend. Zooming in on GNZ-11, JWST revealed an environment that is both chaotic and strangely structured. Streams of gas swirl into what appears to be an actively feeding black hole at the galaxy's center, a quasar-like core embedded in a galaxy only a fraction the size of the Milky Way. The mass of the central black hole estimated to be in the range of several million solar masses, is staggering considering the youth of the universe at this epoch. To have amassed such a colossal structure so early, the growth rates of early black holes must have been not just fast, but nearly explosive. The excess luminosity captured by JWST appears to stem from this furious accretion process, where matter spirals inward so rapidly and densely that the surrounding environment becomes a cauldron of radiation, heat, and plasma jets. What truly disrupts traditional models is the sustained nature of the emission. This wasn't a brief flare or transient outburst. The light curves tracked by JWS indicate a persistent, steady state over luminosity that continued long enough to be recorded and analyzed with confidence. In modern astrophysics, such a state typically hints at either a breakdown in current theoretical frameworks or the existence of unknown mechanisms that regulate mass inflow and outflow differently than previously understood. Could it be that in the high density, high temperature temperature conditions of the early universe, super Eddington accretion was not only possible but common. This line of thought opens several radical possibilities. One is that early black holes, especially the seeds that grew into the supermassive black holes found in most galaxies today, had access to an entirely different mode of feeding. Instead of the inefficient friction-limited accretion seen in modern disks, early black holes may have consumed matter through dense filamentary inflows from the cosmic web. These Filaments, stretching across intergalactic space, could have funneled enormous quantities of primordial gas directly into galactic centers without the bottlenecks and angular momentum barriers we observe in the present epoch. Furthermore, JWST's spectral analysis of GNZ-11's surrounding environment shows unexpectedly high metallicity, the presence of elements heavier than helium. Despite the galaxy's extreme youth, 
This is indicative of a rapid and intense period of star formation followed by explosive supernovae that enriched the interstellar medium. The implications of this are vast. If such chemical maturity occurred in GNZ 11, it suggests that the first generations of stars, the so-called Population 3 stars, lived fast and died young, seeding the galaxy with the elements necessary for more complex structures and potentially even planetary systems much earlier than anticipated. The energy profiles collected during this observation also suggest a tightly packed stellar core, with several massive stars orbiting close to the black hole. These stars, likely caught in the gravitational grip of the central object, could be fueling its growth as they either donate matter through tidal stripping or plunge entirely into its maw. This paints a vivid picture of galactic infancy not as a slow, gentle emergence from cosmic darkness, but as a violent, radiant, and dynamic adolescence, galaxies blazing and growing in defiance of what physics tells us should be possible. JWST's ability to resolve structures at this scale, across such vast distances and epochs, is transforming what were once speculative models into observable phenomena. In the case of GNZ 11, it has laid bare a system where the early rules of galactic evolution seem almost alien compared to those in the modern universe. The discovery of a sustained super-Eddington state not only questions the universality of the Eddington limit, but may also reshape how we understand the timeline and mechanics of black holes and galaxy coevolution. Cosmologists are now faced with questions that strike at the heart of our understanding of the early universe. Was GNZ 11 an outlier, a freak event in a sea of calmer galaxies, or is it a representative snapshot of a more violent, active cosmic youth? If such high energy states were common, it would mean that feedback mechanisms, such as radiation driven winds and outflows that regulate star formation, behaved very differently in the past. It might also mean that the very definition of what constitutes a galaxy in the infant universe universe needs revisiting. Are these structures better described as hybrid proto-quasars, rapidly forming stellar black hole complexes rather than discrete star systems? JWST's data indicates that the morphology of GNZ 11 is surprisingly ordered despite the turbulence. Spiral arms, or at least coherent structures resembling them, are visible in the infrared data, challenging the idea that spiral galaxies only formed much later. The presence of such order amidst chaos could point to a natural self organization organizing tendency in gravitational systems, one that emerges faster than previously modeled in simulations of early galaxy formation. Radiation escaping from GNZ 11 also appears to ionize surrounding gas clouds, contributing to the process of cosmic reionization. This was the epoch in which the fog of neutral hydrogen was cleared, making the universe transparent to light. Identifying a direct source of ionizing photons and linking it to such a dynamic environment strengthens the idea that small but ultra-luminous galaxies galaxies played a major role in this monumental transformation of the universe. What makes this moment particularly significant is how JWST acts not just as a telescope, but as a time portal. Looking at GNZ 11 is looking at a reality that existed when the universe was a fraction of its current age. And what it reveals is that this ancient cosmos was not a quiet nursery, but a blazing forge of gravity and fire. The observed Super Eddington state is not just a data point, it's a challenge hurled at the foundations of astrophysics, a signal from across time that the universe began with more fury, complexity, and radiance than the most intricate equations had suggested. The technical achievement behind this discovery cannot be overstated. Operating at a stable temperature near absolute zero, JWST's instruments were able to pick up subtle variations in light over vast wavelengths. These included not just raw brightness, but also spectral line signatures of elements, ionization states, and redshift distributions that paint a chemical and dynamic portrait of GNZ 11 in vivid detail. This capability means that what once required theoretical extrapolation can now be observed, dissected, and analyzed with increasing precision. Astronomers are now poring over these findings with a mix of awe and recalibration. Super Eddington luminosity is no longer a hypothetical limit breaker for select exotic stars or rare phenomena like ultraluminous X-ray sources. It is now something embedded in the very fabric of early cosmic structures. If these mechanisms were widespread, our cosmic models, from galaxy formation to black hole growth rates, and even the shape of the early universe's energy budget, may require significant revision. Instruments aboard JWS also hint at magnetic field interactions in GNZ 11 that might be orders of magnitude stronger than those in typical nearby galaxies. This could imply magnetically driven outflows or jets, possibly responsible 
responsible for regulating the immense energy flows observed. These jets, if confirmed, would be another sign of early AGN active galactic nuclei behavior, perhaps indicating that even the smallest young galaxies could function as mini quasars during their formative epochs. The question of how such massive black holes formed so quickly is now more pressing than ever. If Eddington limited growth rates were truly exceeded over extended periods, it allows for a path by which small seed black holes could balloon into monsters in just a few hundred million years. This acceleration of cosmic growth ties into larger questions about dark matter halos, galaxy mergers, and the distribution of baryonic matter in the early universe. JWST's glimpse into GNZ-11's luminous heart and the defiance of the Eddington limit observed therein is not merely a scientific event, it is a revelation. It upends timelines, rewrites the early history of galaxy development, and reframes the processes that shape the luminous web of the cosmos. It reminds us that the early universe was not a uniform canvas slowly coming into focus, but rather a stormy arena of extremes, temperature, gravity, and light, pushing the very boundaries of possibility. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us. What are your thoughts on GNZ-11? Will JWS find older galaxies now? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.